Okay, so here we have a part two question from the New York State test. And it's, it's a, just a question here dealing with a circle graph and a frequency table. And the question says that Sean will spin the spinner below. So here's our spinner right here. A hundred times. So that's nice. We can look at percentages and record his results in the table below. That's this table right here. Predict the outcomes for each number on the spinner. Write these predictions in the table. So let's take a look at this table for a moment. Notice that in the left-hand column right here, that's just the number on the spinner, one, two, three, or four. And you can see the areas are marked here on the circles, on the circle one, two, three, and four. On the right hand over here on this column, it says the number of successes out of a hundred spins. They could use different words there. They might use occurrences or or um, events, right? And what they're referring to, a success or an outcome or an occurrence, um, is all the same thing. It's just saying that in this first row, what number of times did you land or have a success and land on the number one? You write that number here, the number two here, the number three and four, and that's all that means. Now with a circle like this, we're forced to estimate, but um, of course, I think you see that this line right here cuts the circle in half which means that this region here, right, region 4, should be, right, about 50% of the circle. So if we spin this thing 100 times, it's reasonable to assume that the spinner will land on this region half of the time. And half of 100 trials is 50. So it's reasonable to say that it'll land 50 times here on this spot. Now what about the other regions? Well, it's it looks to me as if this piece of 1, 2, and 3 is equal to piece 4. So we're splitting the remaining half of the outcomes amongst these 1, 2, 3 regions. And if we split this region in half, I think you can see that region 3 is half of what remains, right? So this region over here, 3, should take half of what's left. And what's left out of 100 spins, well, we already have 50 taken up, so there are 50 more, and half of that is 25. Now the remaining two pieces, uh, they look about equal, right? And it's half, right? They're each half the size of three. Or they're both, you can think of them as being half of what's remaining, right? Because we have so far 75 spins and there are, well, there are 25 more left. And I think it's reasonable to say that out of 100, right, you can have about 12.5 spins for each category here right? 12.5 and 12.5. Um, however, right, this is, this is challenging. They're not very clear on this point in this question. Um, you probably should round, right, these two numbers, 12.5 and 12.5. And you can't round them both up to 100 because then what would happen? Well, you'd have 50 and 25 and two 13s. What does that equal? Well, this 50 and 25 is 75. 85, 95, and then 6 more, it's 101. But we don't have 101 spins to work with, we only have 100. So one of these two should be rounded up, and the other down. And it's arbitrary what you pick, because, well, they're both equal in size and anything could happen. So let's just say, because I like my numbers to fall in a nice, neat order, that I'll have to go 50, 25, round up here, 13, and round down there. Now, of course, right, this is just, um, like, and again, an estimation, a prediction on what might happen. And it's probably most reasonable to round these to the whole number. Hopefully, they'll be clear on that on the test um, that you take that deals with this type of question. But here, I, I would guess rounding makes the most sense. All right, thanks.